Hey, Indian Creek 8th grade students. It's Professor Blazek back once again with another writing tutorial video for your essay on the ones who walk away from Omalas. We're on to step four, which is to write the outline of your essay. You can see we got our little firework with four up here. Your outline is the blueprint to your essay. So in your evidence chart, in writing your thesis, you got a lot of the important information down. Now the next task is to put everything in order so that when you go to type your rough draft, you have everything that you want to say, when you want to say it, and it just really makes the writing of your first draft much, much simpler. So if you haven't done an outline before, it can get a little complicated, but Essentially, you're breaking everything down into steps, and within each step, you break that point down further and further until you get to the evidence and support that you wrote in your evidence chart. So you can see right here, each of your paragraphs is a Roman numeral, so one, two, etc. Most of you will probably only have four, maybe five paragraphs. Um, so you go one through four. Each paragraph is then broken down into your main points, which you mark with a capital letter, A, B. You all know your alphabet. Um, you give a topic sentence right here. The first sentence of each paragraph is your topic sentence. It's the main idea for that paragraph. And then the points beneath your topic sentence are your lead-in, your evidence and your support and so you mark those with one two etc and the last point and we'll talk more about this is each paragraph should end with the transition sentence so that you connect your paragraph before with the paragraph after and transitioning can be a little difficult at first but with practice it can get really easy and good transitions really help your writing flow and sound really good to your reader. Uh, this is because you don't want to jump just from point to point without sort of guiding your reader through your essay. Otherwise, your writing can get confusing. Um, so again, transitioning is something that we'll spend some time on in this video. And so your outline, you're not going into major detail with everything. Uh, your outline is, as you can see, it's kind of like almost like bullet points. Um, you get the important information down, and then when you sit down to write your rough draft, you expand on the information in your outline into full sentences and paragraphs, etc. So you can see here, uh, I've included an example outline. You can see paragraph one, your introduction. Paragraph two is the first part of the prompt, which is the role the child plays for the city of Omalas. You give your information here, transition. Paragraph three, if it would be better to free the child from its imprisonment. Again, you give your reasons, transition, and into your conclusion. Uh, and when you're working on your outline, you don't need to come up with everything for your introduction and conclusion yet. This is more to just focus and order all of the information within the body of your essay. So don't worry too much about the few things that you need in the introduction and conclusion. Fill those in. And then we'll have another activity that will be to really hammer out everything you want to say in your intro and conclusion. So what we can do is we will scroll down here to look at our outline. And you'll notice that a lot of the information that you've already compiled in your evidence chart transitions really smoothly into your outline. And there's just a few pieces left that you need to fill in. So We've got our evidence chart here. Uh, the first step in your outline is you're looking at your introduction. All you need for your introduction right now is your thesis. So we can copy that, paste it right in, and step one is finished. Now, when you get to your second body paragraph, you need to just label the main topic of that body paragraph. So in the prompt, the first part of the prompt asks about the role the child plays for the city of Omalas. So you can just fill in 
the role that the child plays for the city of Omelas, because that's what you're going to be talking about. You don't have to make it super complicated. Uh, and then this next letter, this letter A here, is your main point, your topic sentence for this paragraph. So you want to make sure that when you're starting your body paragraph, you introduce to your reader exactly what you're going to be talking about in the paragraph. So um, for this paragraph, you could say something like, the imprisoned child in Omelas functions as a means to remove the suffering for all other citizens because the child lives a life wholly made up of suffering and sadness. Perfect. Um, this is what you're going to be talking about in the first part of this paragraph. So you introduce it for your reader. And now if you look at your next steps, you can see that you need a lead in, your evidence one, and your support. Well, you all know that you already got that figured out because you did it in your evidence chart. So what we can do is come over here to our evidence chart. We can scroll down and you can simply just copy your first lead in, come back here to our outline, paste it in, go to your first piece of evidence, do the same thing, come back to your outline, you can paste it in, and do the exact same thing with your first piece of support. And so now you know exactly what order you're going to be giving this information. You can see that obviously it's exactly the same as you had over here in your evidence chart. And now when you're going to write your essay, you have it laid out for you. You know exactly what you're going to say. Uh, and it's, it's all ready to go when you're writing your rough draft. So we can scroll down. And what we have next is your second topic point. And so this second piece of evidence that we're going to talk about is what would happen if the child were given freedom, food, or comfort, basically that the city would fall apart. Um, so you can say that the child of Omelas is not allowed any sort of kindness, again, because the city's well-being depends entirely upon its wretched existence. Perfect. This is exactly what you're going to talk about in your next piece of evidence. We can come right back here to our evidence chart. Again, lead in, evidence support. There's a reason that we did it like this on your uh, outline sheet here. And so, again, it's just a simple copy and paste job for all three in that order. And now you're two-thirds of the way through your first body paragraph. So we're doing really well. We can come down. And now one point I want to mention for when you're filling out your own outline is that there is a C, a third topic for both body paragraphs. But in the evidence chart, there are only five pieces of evidence that you were required to come up with. So it's entirely up to you when you are writing your essay. If you want to give a third point in each paragraph, that's fine. You'll just need to, on a separate sheet of paper or a note card, find a third piece of evidence and write a lead in and support for it. Uh, if you only want to go with five, that's fine as well. You just need to make sure that you know which body paragraph you're going to put that third piece of evidence in and then obviously fill it in on your outline and then you can leave the other C, the other third point of the other body paragraph blank uh, and you won't get any points deducted or anything like that. So it's up to you however you want to attack this assignment. So in my example I did find a third piece of information that I'm going to use in this body paragraph. So again I have to come up here come up with my topic, um, and my third piece of information talks about the positives 
that the citizens get from the child's existence. So what I'm going to say is, although the child is living a life of abject suffering, its existence and means of taking away the sadness from all others has a very positive impact on the rest of the citizens of Omalas. So again, I previewed what I'm going to talk about. Come back to my evidence chart. We can do our little copy and paste job here. Hopefully uh, this hasn't gotten to be too repetitive for any of you, but I promise that when you're going through this process, it is going to make writing your rough draft so much easier. So we put our support in, and now you're pretty much done with your first body paragraph except for writing your transition. Now, your transition is meant to be a way of connecting the paragraph that it's wrapping up with the paragraph that follows. So it should touch on the points of both of those paragraphs. Um, transitioning can be something that's a little tricky at first because of all the things that a good transition needs to do. But with practice, you'll get really good at it, and it will really, again, help your writing flow really smoothly for a reader. So <clears throat> my transition needs to touch upon the paragraph that it's ending, which is the role of the child. And it also needs to preview what I'm going to talk about in my next paragraph, which is that I'm taking the side of leaving the child in its existence because the small improvements that the child would experience if it was given freedom would not be enough to make up for the losses experienced by others. Again, I know that our discussion really went the other way. A lot of people were for freeing the child. So this is almost kind of like a devil's advocate thing, just so you can see both sides of the argument. So I need to touch on both of those facts in my transition. And so the transition that I came up with is as follows. While it is true that the child lives a life that is unthinkably negative, the terms of the existence of Omalas dictate the child must be there for the perfection of the lives of others. Because the improvement on the child's life, were it given freedom, would not remotely compensate for the loss experienced by others, it is a sad fact that the child's existence is one that should remain unchanged. So you can see that I touch upon the paragraph above, which is the role the child plays, and I also preview what I'm going to talk about in my next paragraph, which is that I think its life, albeit a sad one, an incredibly sad one, um, needs to remain as it is for the betterment of society. And I want you also to notice that I even touch upon, by adding that it's a sad fact, um, I touch upon the other side of the argument, which is something that really good writers will do. Instead of just only talking about one side, you can mention and then sort of disprove the other side of the argument, and that's how you make your writing really stand out as the correct way to feel to your reader. So I'm not going to go through and do the second body paragraph. Uh, that's something that you'll be attacking entirely on your own. But I hope that this video helped show, A, just how much information you already have for your outline and how to transition it over from your evidence chart to your outline, and B, uh, just the ordering of that and how to write a good topic sentence and also a good strong transition. So uh, again, this is Professor Blazek signing off, uh, and I just want to wish you all good luck on coming up with an outline so that you can be ready to go when we get to writing our rough drafts.